after the odd jump of publishers from Sierra to Warner Brothers in the development of Fear 2, I wasn't surprised in the slightest to see the game released with some DLC as all good WB games will inevitably fall to. Perhaps Warner Brothers had been more laid back in the pre-2010 days since it doesn't appear that Project Origin was subject to a horrible pre-order bonus scheme and the DLC campaign wasn't chopped off the end of the actual game to sell as extra. I bring this up because Fear 3, or Fathria, as the box would want us to call it, did not come out with any DLC or pre-order bonuses while also being a Warner Brothers game. A huge leap in customer appreciation from their more recent Arkham Knighty flavored days. This newfound nicety in bringing back yet another Fear game also brought with the developer change from Monolith of Original Fear to some unknown studio Day One who created some mech assault games and the individual title of Fracture. Apparently WB and Day One brought on Monolith somewhat to help out but not enough to put them in the opening logo scroll, so make of that what you will. As Fear 3 begins, it shows off the developer hand change attitude of trying to ape the style of the original without really knowing how, so it comes off as incredibly tryhardy. Sure, the studio will bring the audience their favorite hits of the original run, yet not understand the nuances of what they are working with. It's just kind of odd to see characters in places from the original Fear that honestly had graphics that would have looked like neighbors to the PS2 all HD-ified and redesigned. Kind of like what happened in Mario since they had to create 1080p Goombas and the like. I'll give some fair play to Day 1, the art style is brilliant and the game looks very nice. Yet, seeing Alma with her piercing monster eyes did set me on edge a bit. Another thing that threw me off kilter was the game's first scene where we see Point Man being interrogated by Arma Camp soldiers in a prison apparently run by their company after which Paxton breaks into the cell and possesses one of the soldiers to murder the other one and free his brother. This first scene shows you really all you need to know about how Day One treated the continuity of the other games. They definitely know that they existed and want to play off of some of the old stuff, but they also decide to tear out pages of the story at random and fill in the blanks themselves because if you remember in Fear 2, the game that preceded this one so recently that Sergeant Beckett is found inside of the psychic amplifier in his first appearance, Armacam as a company was so broken that its president was having a death feud with its board of directors. So telling me that the security forces from that company are still so unified and solid that they are able to have a chain of command and the ability to overstaff a complete prison is ridiculously revisionist. Why the hell are these guys still fighting when the company paying them has literally imploded on itself? If it was to survive, it would make more sense. But if that was the case, then the group wouldn't also be joining in on the world's worst scheme of witness murdering ever written later on in the game. Also, it is totally unclear whether or not Paxton Fettel is running around with the body that he inherited at the end of Fear 2 Reborn, because he's able to do all this possession and attacking of people with ghost magic in the co-op multiplayer. It's one of the best cases of co-op multiplayer I've seen since Super Mario Bros. 3 and the Borderlands games, by the way, because this isn't just attacked on mode where you play a clone of the first player. Nope, it goes instead with making Point Man and Paxton Fettel have two completely different skill sets to employ on their way to dealing with Ulma. Point Man is able to use guns and military vehicles, while Paxton can jump into enemies to use bullets and throw ghost magic around as an infinite gun, yet he can't use physical weapons. And by how the game is ended, it's clear that Fear 3 was planned out to be a multiplayer focused with a tacked on multiplayer game. The story having a focus on Paxton and Point's mutual upbringing by Harlan and their subsequent rivalry was a great way to put the co-op in context, so I'd say if you needed something dumb to do with friends, then there you are. This is great. And to rave on Paxton Fettel more, it did take me until the final game in the series to notice this after Paxton became a full-fledged character. That his voice acting and animation is phenomenal. Also, the script isn't too bad either, because he comes off as a completely insane person looking up Point Man just to have someone help him in his plan to get to Alma. His monstrous behavior and lack of empathy meshes with his cutthroat combat skills and still having an axe to grind against Point Man for shooting him in the face in the original Fear. At points, you don't really know if he's on Point Man's good side or not since he sometimes helps his brother, but then laughs in his face when he's not doing very well. His voice actor Peter Lurie can do his untrustworthy near villainous script true justice with how he doles out his love of violence and evil laughs perfectly. If this is part of your plan, 
then I'd say things are going quite swimmingly. <laughs> Also, let's just say I do love his redesigned character since that douchebag leather jacket he wears and flat top haircut kind of suits an off-kilter villain protagonist. While that design's working well, it has to fight against the still brilliant AI of the game's enemies that do have the ability to switch cover all the time and even flank you directly when the cards are down on their side of the table. There's even this one enemy type with a shotgun that specifically acts like a suicide gunner and that shakes up the combat. It makes the battle somewhat interesting and avoids diving straight towards Battlefield series conveyor belt cover shooting, but the issue of Day One trying to ape Monolith's style is that they tried to do the active combat dialogue thing that the old Fear did to tell the player where the enemies were going and how many of them were left. The problem in Fear 3 is that Day One created so many lines and programming into the combat that these damn warning messages are going off every 5 seconds. Watch out, he's in cover, or I need support, or frag out, is way over the top, and combined with the usual miasma of constant gunfire really does turn this into the game constantly screaming at you whenever you hit a nest of chest high walls. It's certainly keeping in tune with the series as you are going to get more of your scares out of dealing with the regular enemy shooting than the game's horror sections. Hell, if you manage to get past the office building mech fight, then you're almost guaranteed the credits. That was Dragon's Teeth level bullshit. To be fair to Fear 3, it isn't as dull as Fear 2, since it doesn't do 5 second QTE sections as its core building of horror, and tries to fall back into the horror sections thing, but again, not really. Yeah, you'll be hitting areas where there are a lot of horrific type enemies like the mad cultist people in the city and the shadow dogs in the dark places, but these sections aren't scary. These enemies are just all annoying and take forever to kill. The problem is that all of them are melee focused and trying to pin down an enemy that's standing literally right on top of you is nearly impossible, especially when it takes multiple shots for each one. Even when the game tries to help out with the shadow dogs by giving you a shotgun doesn't help because it takes two shells per dog and these things have a max of 18 bullets. It could have been worse, that giant ghoul thing could have been a regular enemy in the game since it's freaking invisible and I'll thank Christ for that. The ghoul is in some unclear way related to the overarching intrigue of Fear 3, following up directly from Fear 2 is Alma, the psychic ghost being pregnant and the labor of the baby is causing the world to fall apart, making it even weirder that Armor Cam is still spending all this time and energy trying to kill Point Man. Why didn't Day One just use the replica soldiers again, who have absolutely nothing to live for? Especially since they're just rewriting the canon at random. A part of this revisit to the planning desk was the reintroduction of Jin from Fear, who managed to survive all the bullshit of the Army Camp nuke to niche out a life in the sewers, calling out Point Man for help. It's the best explanation you're gonna get for why the two brothers don't just leg it in the opposite direction from all this psychotic bullshit. It's for the best that Point Man doesn't get any questions asked, really, considering he's literally a mute. Even when the game delves into Point Man's backstory and shows him as a kid, he still doesn't say anything, which is odd considering Sergeant Beckett was given a voice actor in spite of being in Point Man's shoes in the last game. I do want to give props to Day One for working with his dopey Don Santiago Eddie Riggs looking face, because while he does the Gordon Freeman thing to other characters being silent, he also puts a lot of energy into to his animation and facial expressions that showed a lot of personality without using a script, since he can get angry at things, be indignant and in Paxton whenever he's trying to kill him, and even be happy at the end of the game. But just like the earlier Fear games in Dead Space 1 found out, you can't have horror games happen to silent protagonists. It will never, and has never worked out for the best. You need that straight man against the horror to have it really hit home, and making it worse is that... Fear 3 is just not scary. Sure, throughout the games you'll be watching Alma's labor tear the world apart with giant infinite sinkholes, there's many suicides, and it summons murder gangs and psychic monsters, but that's about it. It throws out new enemies to shoot and makes the sky a funny color. 
It's probably an inherent problem with the first person shooter, is that a shooter really can't work efficiently if the guns were held by Silent Hill monsters. And to marry the two takes real care and hard work, which this series has never managed adequately. The developer would have had a better chance if they kept making horror levels in the game in the spirit of the neighborhood breaking and entering level, it, but it ruins the horror tone you were going for if you go from that straight back to facility filled with goons and no supernatural bits. Yeah, the game has some nice ideas in the plot, but in terms of a good, soupy, depressing atmosphere like those Silent Hills, it's not even close. Hell, Dead Space was a lot closer to that series and it had literally zero subtlety. It had negative subtlety. And since we're running on empty, let's skip ahead to when day one stopped giving a shit. Because these guys have been tearing cannon pages out like crazy the entire time, deciding what did and did not happen to Point Man and Paxton Fettel the last four games, and how their backstory should have been written instead of what was actually written and all that good stuff. The game ends on an odd note, because after a magical off-screen journey to the Project Origin facility site, after the pair managed to kill Sergeant Beckett, Paxton convinces Point Man that they need to rid themselves of these horrible Harlan upbringing memories in order to prepare themselves for facing Alma again as a family. So you tool around in it for a while, discover your old shared bedroom chamber, and then go around breaking some vaguely important mementos from the abuses Harlan gave you while being stalked by that ghoul thing, and it ends with a psychic showdown with the bad memories as represented by that giant ghoul in a horrible final boss fight, and the next part's gonna be spoilery, so just a quick tip off for you avoiding that. Just like in Fear 2, after this underwhelming shit pile of a boss encounter, the game just flat ends ends after a cutscene in which Alma's baby is dealt with, and then Alma's psychic ghost disintegrates never to be seen again. I'm sure that the ending depends on whether or not Point Man or Paxton got more RPG points throughout the co-op run, but in single player, Point Man will always win, and what he wins is Alma's child. Yeah, for some reason, Alma gives Point Man her child and then he just carries it off into the sunset in a sort of cliffhanger ending type of way alluding to a Fear 4 that'll never be released. It's even less likely than Dead Space 4 simply because of how hit and miss this entire series has been. The horror has never been atmosphere filling and mostly relied on its combat with regular dudes to build tension, and now that the last game in this series is retconning things like crazy, I can't imagine there's a huge demand for more of it. Another problem is that Day One has been bought out, so another developer change would have to happen for the game to exist. And another problem for Fear 3 is that it leaned more towards the Call of Duty shooter standard, which hurts the horror even more due to unrelated familiarity in the audience with non-horror games. You can't really scare a character who's basically a regenerating health tank with feet. Ultimately, Fear 3 is an odd game that just wanted to stick with its old ideas and themes to spin them in new directions, but also wanted to jam in new ideas on top of that in a jumble that makes no sense. The shooting and AI of the enemies is still spot on and quite fun with some nice vignettes, yet like the Call of Duty style it's aping alongside original Monolith, the game is also a 6 hour campaign like them and the game's shortness and abrupt end makes it look like Day 1 just ran out of money suddenly at the end of development. So they just stitched it together as best they can, but the best they can made it look like the god monster at the end of Silent Hill 3. It's certainly a fun built from the ground up as a co-op game to play with a good chum, but as an extension of the series as a whole it doesn't do very much. The plot is schizophrenic and from the end it looks like the series is wrapped up in a totally unsatisfying manner. I think this is the most mixed of all the trail mixes I've had in a video game, so there you go. Middle of the road scoreboard for you folks at home, the most dangerous of all the scoreboards. Also, here's a victory for Gamer for you, hopefully not as abrupt as this ending, and I'll see you guys next week for something completely different, and thank you for watching.